I am so happy to be here this afternoon. And I have just one question for us. What is the most important machine in the world? What is the most important machine in the world? Think about that for a second. How would you answer the most important machine? Would you say it's something like the printing press? Is that it? Maybe the automobile, the most important machine. What about the airplane? Maybe that's it. Is that the most important machine in the world? Think about it for a second. What about the personal computer? Maybe that's it. Is that the most important machine in the world? Or what about what's in your hand or your pocket, your pocketbook, your purse, pack right now, your smartphone? Maybe that's the most important machine in the world. Think about it for a second. What would you say? I'm going to argue that the most important machine in the world is the most abundant machine in the world. The machine where we have more copies than any other machine, I'm going to say that's the most important machine in the world, most abundant. Okay? So what machine is that? What machine has more copies than any other machine on the planet? Hmm. Is it the smartphone? That's an interesting idea. There are a lot of smartphones in this room. Is that the most you know, abundant and important machine on the planet? Let's think about it for a second. Smartphones have been manufactured and marketed since about 2005. And in that time, three billion smartphones have been produced. Three billion. And if you do the math, that comes out to being about 10 smartphones per second. Every second, every minute, every hour, 10 per second. That, that's a huge number. That's an abundant machine. So is that the most abundant machine in the world? The most important machine in the world? Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not even astronomically close to being the most important machine in the world. The most important machine in the world is being produced at an unfathomable 10 to the 24th power every second. That's one with 24 zeros after it. 10 septillion copies per second. 10 septillion. The smartphone, 10 per second. The most important machine in the world, 10 septillion copies each second. How is that even possible? How could you make a machine that fast in so many copies? Well, it's because the most important machine in the world is a nano-machine. It's incredibly small, incredibly tiny. It's so small that if you lined up two million copies of the machine side by side, two million, it would span just one inch. Two million per inch. Now, if you're like me, it's a little hard to envision two million of anything. So maybe you'll help me with the first demonstration. I'm going to ask you to turn to the person you came with, someone next to you, and I want you to, with permission, reach out and pluck one hair from their head. <laughs> You've got permission. Reach out and then reciprocate. Let them get a hair from you. That's right. If there's no one next to you, or if there's not much hair, you could look at a hair on your arm. Okay? But everyone needs to have a hair. So a hair from your neighbor, a hair from your friend, or if you're really stuck, check out a hair on your arm. I want you to look at the thickness of that hair. Everyone should have a hair one way or the other. Thickness of that hair, its diameter. Imagine that in that thickness of that little hair, you could lay 4,000 copies of the most important machine in the world, and it would just span the thickness of that hair. 4,000 copies for one hair. Isn't that amazing? Hairs down. So, what do you need to know about this machine? It's a nano machine, but there are some startling and amazing things about the most important machine in the world. One is, it wasn't designed by people. Secondly, 
It's not built by people. Not designed or built by people. And third, it's not even part of us. It's not in our body. The most important machine in the world is not about humans. Not designed, built, or present in our human bodies. And yet, it is absolutely crucial for human life. In fact, I would argue that the most important machine in the world is more important than humans. Now, don't get me wrong, I am a scientist, but I'm also a man of faith, and I believe that people have wonderful and joyful purposes on this planet. But from the point of view of the environment, our ecosystem, humans are dispensable, we're superfluous, we're unnecessary. The most important machine in the world is absolutely crucial. Humans, dispensable, the most important machine in the world, crucial. And I hope you find that just a little bit humbling. Let's take a little tour of this machine so you can understand how amazing and intricate it is. I brought a model that I can show you here that shows the machine if it were magnified 10 million times in size. 10 million times. At that scale, it's about the size of a softball, but it's much more interesting. It's full of intricate twists and turns and a surface that's wonderful, that helps it accomplish its task. That's its size 10 million times larger than the original. What else do we need to know about it? It's assembled in a magnificent way. It's made of tiny components. In fact, there are 4,000 tiny beads organized in this machine on 16 strings that are folded together that make it work. I prepared a video so you can understand how intricate and gorgeous this machine is. There are eight short strings that form caps on the machine, and I've colored them all differently, even though they're each identical. And you can see the curly cues and the bends and the folds that allow these eight cap pieces to assemble. They're beautiful. And then in the center of the machine is a core, and it has eight more long strings that have more beads on them, and they're packed together to form the center of the machine that allows it to do its job. So we have eight cap strings and eight central strings in the core that fold together to make this magnificent and beautiful three-dimensional object that is the most important machine in the world. And more amazing to me, than its intricacies and all of this lovely shape that's assembled together to make the full machine is that it is a self-assembling nano-machine. We humans, we don't know how to make self-assembling things. What I mean by that is there's no template needed, there's no assembly line required. If we simply organize the 16 strings near each other, they spontaneously fold up and assemble into the most important machine in the world. That's incredible. I think that's just so amazing. So you've been very patient. It's a nano machine. There's more copies of it than anything else on the planet. What is it? Does it have a name? What does it do? Well, it has a name. Scientists have given it a name that describes its function. And its name is ribulose 15-bisphosphate carboxylase. Everyone out loud with me, ribulose 15-bisphosphate carboxylase. I love that. So that's the name of the most important machine in the world. But luckily, scientists are also kind and clever, and they said, that's a lot of name. Let's give it a nickname that people can appreciate, because it is, after all, the most important machine in the world. We should be able to talk about it. So they gave it a nickname, and this is really the only other thing I want you to remember from this talk, except that I let you pull your neighbor's hair. And that is the nickname of the most important machine in the world. And they said, let's come up with a nickname people can remember. So they took, took a name that sounds a little bit like the cookie company Nabisco. And the name of the most important machine in the world is Rubisco. You can think of it as Rude Nabisco, if you want to make that contraction. Rubisco. Let's say that together one time. Rubisco. That's the name of the most important machine in the world, Rubisco. And what does Rubisco do? It does something unbelievably cool. Rubisco makes sugar from sunlight and air. Isn't that incredible? We humans have no clue how to do that. Rubisco makes sugar from sunlight and air. 
And it turns out Rubisco is struggling to do this job. That's why there's so much Rubisco, because it's a very, very hard job. There are many nanomachines on our planet that can do their jobs very fast and very efficiently, but Rubisco is not one of them. Rubisco is struggling, and I want to explain why it's struggling. The reason is that the part of the air that Rubisco needs is just a tiny trace of the air we breathe. It's struggling to extract just a little part of that air. When we talk about air, it's a little confusing because air is transparent and we can't think about the different components because we can't see them. So I've made just a little demonstration to allow us to imagine the parts of the air and you can understand why Rubisco is struggling. So I have a beaker here and we're imagining that it's full of a sample of air, which it is, but we're going to think about the air in a little easier way. We're going to treat the air as if it were made of liquids. So you can see more appreciatively the different parts of the air and what it is that Rubisco has to do. So what are the components of the air? Well, 80% of the air is this stuff, nitrogen. It's a gas that is 80% of the air around us. I'm going to pour it in, and that takes care of a lot of the air we breathe. But nitrogen is completely useless to Rubisco. It's not interested in nitrogen at all. And in fact, nitrogen isn't helpful for humans or animals. Plants can't use it directly. It's like a filler. And so that's not helpful for Rubisco. 19% of the air we breathe is this familiar gas, oxygen. And of course, humans and animals need oxygen to breathe. And plants breathe oxygen at night. But oxygen is also not helpful for Rubisco. In fact, oxygen is a poison for Rubisco. I'm going to stir that in there. We've accounted for almost all the air we breathe, and it is not any of it useful for Rubisco. Rubisco is struggling because it needs to avoid being poisoned by oxygen, and it can't use nitrogen at all. What else? A little bit of the air, 1%, is argon gas, also not useful for living things and not useful for Rubisco. I'm going to shoot in that argon gas. And if you're doing the math, you can see we've accounted for almost the entire composition of the air in our sample, and none of it's useful for Rubisco. Rubisco is after this stuff. I've made a deep purple sample of this dye to show what Rubisco is after, and it's only four one-hundredths of one percent of the air we breathe. And it's a gas you've heard of called carbon dioxide. And when I shoot it in, it's just a couple drops. And even though it's a very deep purple dye, when I stir it in, it's almost undetectable. That dye is diluted into the air in such a way that it's very hard to extract it again. That's carbon dioxide, and that's the food for Rubisco. And it's also an important gas because it's different from all the other gases because it's what we call a greenhouse gas. The other gases are transparent, light moves through them, they don't have an effect on our planet's heating. Carbon dioxide in our atmosphere is a greenhouse gas. As light passes through it and is converted to heat, the heat can't radiate out into space if there's carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. So the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere has a big impact on the heating of our planet. And CO2 is the food for the most important machine in the world. It's crucial for the balance of carbon dioxide around our planet. Why is Rubisco so important for humans? It's because of this stunning fact. Rubisco makes everything we eat, all of our foods, and it makes all of our fuels. That's pretty impressive and pretty important for the most important machine in the world. This thing makes all of our food, and it makes all of our fuels. Everything we eat, every plant was built by this machine. Every animal that ever ate a plant or ate another animal was built by this machine that it had captured sugar by taking it out of the air with the power of the sun. And every fuel, anything we can burn, was made by this machine. All of our fossil fuels, coal, all of our oil products, petroleum, natural gas, gasoline, all were made by this machine. And all of our modern fuels that we can burn, like wood, and the sugar we burn in our body were made by this machine, the most important machine in the world. That's incredible. So if it's that important, if that machine is so crucial to our lives, 
how could we use that machine and get more of its capabilities? The answer is simple. If you want to get more of this machine, Rubisco, we just need more plants. Because it turns out that every plant, every green leaf, every stem, every needle, and all the green algae on our planet is packed full of the most important machine in the world doing its job. We want more Rubisco, the most important machine in the world. We simply need more plants. So let me sum up. What have we learned? We learned that the most important machine in the world is called Rubisco. It's a nano machine. It was not designed by humans. It's not built by humans. It's not part of the human body. But it's crucial for human existence, and in many ways, it's more important than humans. What's the most important machine in the world? Say it with me one more time. Rubisco. Thank you. Thank you.